let's say we have now vector A. Um, sorry, I'm changing to my brush right here. There we go. Vector A, I'm going to write it in black. I really only have two colors here. I could switch, but you're going to see all my ugly menus, and you probably don't want to do that. So we'll call that vector A right there. And vector B is going to be red. I'm going to add it to it. Uh, I'm going to make that a little steeper. That's vector B. And we want to find what the resultant vector C is. You know what? You're going to just have to see some of these uh, menus here. Because I'm going to make vector C, uh, I'm going to make it blue, I think. I'm going to probably have to change it back later on. But um, that will be blue, vector C. And that should go from the origin to the final arrowhead of the final vector that was added. Remember, this is our origin right there. So how do we find the value of vector C? Well, you could draw it out using a, a protractor and a ruler, uh, which would be fine, but that's what we call the graphical method. This is what we call the component method. So let's say that vector A, we break it down into its components of AX right here. So that's AX and AY. AY, okay? Then, oh, I have to switch colors again here. Let's go back to some variety of red. Then we've got vector B. That also can be broken down into BX. It's going to be real short here because the X component isn't very long. It's BX and BY. All right. Well, what that means is, since we have the components of vector A and vector B, we can simply add those components together to get vector C. Here's what I mean. Let's say we're solving for, um, for vector, say we know the components of vector A. Now, we're doing it backwards now because we said at first we know the, the vector itself. But say we know the components of vector A just like we're going to be adding together the components of vector C. Um, vector A is equal to the square root of the x component of A squared plus the y component of A, the quantity squared. Right? And you're probably asking yourself, where did that come from? Well, we had that one or, well, maybe two or three slides ago. But it also is the same as our Pythagorean theorem. That is Pythagoras, Pythag, uh, the A G O R A S, told us that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay, fair enough. Well, that means if we're solving for the hypotenuse, or in this case, the vector itself, that means the vector or hypotenuse is the square root of the two sides. Oop, that should be an A a squared plus b squared added together squared added together and the square root of that all right well, that's what this is telling us right here we're solving for vector a okay we already know vector a and we know vector b but we need to solve for vector c how can we do that well we know the components of vector c how you say how is it that we know that uh Let's change back to my blue again here. How is it that we know CX and CY? Sorry, that's really crooked there. Try that again. There we go. And CY? We can do that by adding all the AXs and the BXs together. That makes CX. Is not that plus that equal to CX? Sure it is. And is not AY plus BY equal to CY? Sure. So essentially, we have found the components CX and CY of vector C. So now let's simply just solve for C. Um, so vector C right here. Solving for that. How do we do that? The same way as we wrote right up here. Square root of CX squared plus cy squared. Well, what is cx? cx, 
that is the x component of c, is the sum of ax right here and bx, right? ax plus bx equals cx. So that is the c component, I'm oh, sorry, that's the x component of vector c. So that is basically going to be that value right there. So we need to square it. So that's all of c on the x-axis squared. Now let's add the y components of c. So what's going to be what's going to be squared down here? Though? That's going to be a y plus b y. Those two added together equal the y component of c. And of course, we need to square that. Square that. Square the x component. Add it together. Take the square root of that, and that gives us the value of c. So we can solve for the resultant vector c without even having to draw any lines or measure anything. We can simply do it by knowing what the values of a and b are. What this means, however, is that we're going to have to we're going to have to create some charts in order to keep all of our our values straight. Um, down at the bottom right here, I'm going to write a sample chart or, or create, you, know, you might say, a, a table. A table might be a better word for it. Um, so let's do it like this. Let's make one column called vector. All right. And another co column called the magnitude. What's the magnitude of that vector? And let's talk about the um, the angle that it makes with the horizontal. That's what we're going to call theta. And then we're going to make two rows right here that account for the x and y components of each vector. So how do we find the x component of a vector? Well, I just wrote it down previously, but then I erased it. Oh, no, actually, it's a, uh, where is it? Let's, let's do that. Yeah, the x component of a vector is that right there. It's the vector times a cosine of theta. And then that's x. And the y component is that vector times the sine of theta. Great. So that means, whoops, in fact, I need to erase that. I'm writing on the wrong slide here. Um, so that means for x, regardless of whatever the, the vector is, that is the magnitude or the vector, magnitude of the vector times the cosine of our angle theta. And for the y component, that's the magnitude times the sine of theta. That should be a should be a theta right there, not an O times the sine of theta. Okay. So again, we don't have any numbers quite just yet. We just have uh, values here, but let's write in um, the values for all of our um, for for all of our vectors that we have. So, or, well, let's write in the the expressions for them. You might say so. Vector a. What's the magnitude? Oh, I don't know. We'll just call it a. Magnitude a. The angle. I don't know. I'll call that angle a. Theta a. And so the x component that is ax is simply a times a cosine oops uh, of theta a oops, let's back up here a minute here there we go cosine of theta a the y component is a times the sine of theta a all right b let's look at vector B right here. I'm gonna make that red again. All right, vector B. So the magnitude is just B. We don't know what it is. We just made it up. We'll call the angle that B makes with the horizontal theta B, and we'll call the x component of B. That's gonna be B times this, the cosine of theta B, and the y component is B times the sine. Oops, sine of theta B. And let's write in C now. C. The magnitude is um, is going to be C. Well, actually, we don't even know the magnitude yet. How would we find it? We would find it by 
determining that right there. Okay, then how would we find then theta c? Where does that come from? Well, if we know, let me uh, let me use one more color right here to to set this off. I'll make it uh, uh, I'll make it a yellow, some version of yellow. If we know cx right there and cy. What is the, the angle we're trying to solve for? We're trying to solve for the angle that vector C makes with the horizontal right there. Now, well, how would we do that? Okay, we know, regarding this angle, we know the opposite, and we know the adjacent, so O and A. That sounds like a tangent function. Okay, so if that means then that, um, let me get the right color here. Let me erase part of this arrow because I kind of drew it right in the way. That means then that the, the, the tangent of an angle equals, oh, well, you might say of theta c equals c y, that is the opposite, right? Toa, T-O-A, uh, the opposite over the adjacent cx. And that means that the angle theta c is the inverse tangent tan to the negative one of cy over cx. Oops, right there. So we should be able to plug in what cy and cx are. That means it's the tangent, inverse tangent of what is cy. That's ay plus by, right? ay plus by, man, it's getting real tight there, and that's over cx. What is cx? That's ax plus bx, plus bx. So whatever those values are, that gives us a resultant angle, that's theta c, and that tells us what our complete or our total resultant vector is c when we add vector a and vector b together. That's the basis of our component method. We're gonna be doing a few examples in class, and if you're listening at home, you'll wanna start looking Example four, five, adding those vectors together, making a table just like listed right here, and start solving for your resultant vector C or, or D or whatever it happens to be. Come to class if you have any questions. Come to class with those questions, and we'll talk about them then, or see me after class, and I'll, I'll sit down with you and help you, help you work this out. But this is the component method of adding and subtracting vectors, and... Um, it's, uh, it's going to be up to you to practice these outside of class. Come see me if you have any questions. See you then.